So Notion, my second brain just got a big upgrade, but is any smarter than the AI assistant that's been hogging all the limelight lately? Let's find out. Hi folks, this video is gonna be all about the differences I found between ChatGBT and Notion AI, having had the opportunity to use both for a little while now. So I'm gonna be putting them both through their paces to see how they fare in improving my workflows and saving me time. Let the bot battle begin. So let's start with a comparison of pricing. Now, having been in public beta since November and having attracted a lot of attention from the tech world, ChatGBT was one of the fastest services to get to 100 million users in three months. Now, OpenAI recently released their pricing models for ChatGBT, or to be specific, ChatGBT Plus, and this will be their subscription model and it'll be offered at a fee of $20 per month. Now, at the time of recording this, ChatGBT Plus subscription is only available to users in the US and the UAE, but it is expected to run roll out to other countries really soon. And what do you get for that fee that's different to their current free access? Well, it's essentially a VIP pass that gets you to the front of the queue for chat requests, no waiting times during peak periods, faster response times in general, and priority access to any new features. So if like me, you are already a paid user of Notion, I'm actually on one of their legacy plans as I've been a user for many years now at just $5 a month. You can't actually get this rate anymore. So if you start from scratch, you'll be starting at $10 a month if you just want the paid unlimited personal use plan without any of your AI features included. Now the AI feature is another $10 per month. However, if you're already on a paid plan with Notion, you do get a 20% discount on the AI feature if you choose to add it to your account. So in my case, I can have everything for $13 a month, which is absolutely fine for me. And in fact, I've often thought Notion was a bit of a steal, even at $10 a month, as it's pretty much the main feature of my second brain, and I trust it to run so many aspects of my life. So in summary, if you haven't got the need for all of Notion's wider features, potentially you could be just using Notion's AI for half the price of ChatGBT+. Not bad. Subjectively, I'm gonna be looking for ChatGBT to perform twice as well as Notion to justify this in some of our comparisons. Let's see how we get on. So I thought we could put these systems through their paces with a few use cases that I would typically use a tool like this for. So first of all, content repurposing. And as a content creator, I often have to repurpose stuff that I've written and find a different way to summarize or present the same information for different platforms. So for example, I might write a video script to use for one of my YouTube videos, and then need to write a slightly different version of that to add to my personal blog, and then another which might go into my monthly newsletter. So I'm often having to spend time copywriting in order to repurpose content. And I've got to admit, this is not a big skill of mine. So let's see how these two apps get on making my life a bit easier. So here's my script in Notion for a video I made last year about creative burnout. So let's see how both of these get on summarizing this as a blog article. So with Notion AI, this isn't bad. It's focused mainly on the Notion page, which is in a script format. So it's understood that this is a video, which is kind of clever, but not what I really wanted. So let's try adding in more detail. Okay, uh, more of the same. It's still pretty good content though. And if I ask it to write me a blog on this topic instead, this is what we're gonna get. And this is much more of what I was looking for. Really nice. How about ChatGBT then? So to get ChatGBT to do this, I first need to copy and paste all of this text from my video script over into the chat window. I'll try that first. And as we can see, I don't even need to ask for a summary this time. I've just been given a summary from ChatGPT, and again, this is recognized that this is a video script and it's commenting on it as if it was watching the video. Pretty clever. If I do the same and ask it to write me a blog post on creative burnout, I actually get another impressive bit of writing with an intro, a middle, and a conclusion. It reads really well and it's got a really nice natural style to it. Now, it wouldn't be too hard for me to make a few tweaks to either of these in order to make it sound exactly like the sort of thing I might write. So I'd probably call this one a bit of a draw so far. Both systems aren't quite at the level I would like to write me a blog on the exact text I provided, but it didn't take long to get what I needed. So on to comparison. Now, a lot of my videos have tended towards comparisons of features or prices between two or more products. And I found myself wondering how each of these AI systems might fare in terms of comparing the features of two physical products. So in Notion AI, we can ask it to create a table comparison. So let's go with Apple versus Google phones. 
So I think this is pretty cool. I was deliberately pretty unspecific here about which iPhone I wanted to comparing with the Google Pixel. And we can see that Notion AI has actually given me a range to work with that covers multiple models and options. And in this table format, it's super easy for me to construct a video around if I ever wanted to make a video on this particular topic. So let's now take a look at ChatGPT's response. And wow, we can see here we've got a much more comprehensive response. And again, no problem creating something in a tabulated format. I also like that with ChatGBT, this has given us a little caveat somewhere at the end rather than just the information I requested. So that's over and above for me. And so I'm gonna give this round to ChatGBT. So these results got me thinking and I thought I'd take this a stage further and see what they thought of each other. Okay, so absolutely no bias there in terms of the results from either AI system, and they're both keen to point out that it is a case of different strokes for different folks, kind of. This really surprised me, as I'd assume there would be at least some level of bias baked in, but it seems to me like these are both pretty objective answers. Still, for me, this one goes to ChatGBT for me, for the added rigor and going beyond what I'd even asked. So finally, explanations. Now, because I'm a bit of a geek about a lot of things, really, sometimes I have a tendency to go diving into a topic without fully explaining what it is I'm talking about. So I thought I'd ask both bots to explain a couple of psychological concepts to me. One that's well established, in this case, Gestalt psychology, and another which is more contemporary, such as a type of cognitive bias, in this case, the pseudo certainty effect. So Notion's response to the Gestalt question was actually quite basic, but to be fair, I did ask for a simple answer. And when I asked it for more, it went on to provide a critique of the theory, which I thought was pretty cool. This is proving that this is both a reporting tool and an evaluative tool if you ask the right questions. So for me, ChatGPT's response was a little bit too conceptual. I was left thinking that if I had no idea about this theory, I still wouldn't really be sure what was meant by this. So if we try the more contemporary concept of the pseudo certainty effect, now Notion, with that prompting, gives me both an explanation and a really good solid example that makes this theory really easy to understand. And ChatGPT's response was a little bit more basic on this one. I had to give it a further prompt to provide an example. And even then, the example wasn't as concrete as the one that Notion provided. So I'm gonna give this one to Notion too. In terms of my workflows and the sort of thing I would use, these systems for Notions is out in the lead for me. And that's not to say that ChatGPT isn't undeniably impressive and natural, and I'm forever being surprised by the kind of content it can churn out. So those are some of my initial impressions and comparisons. And well, I'm gonna have to hand it to Notion AI, not because it's necessarily the smartest in terms of all potential responses, but it genuinely seems designed to save me time. Plus I'm already working here in Notion most of the time. So having this AI assistant here in the app reduces any friction that might otherwise be found by having to switch browsers and copy text between apps. Folks, as always, if you've got any thoughts about either of these services or questions about what I've shown in this video, just let me know in the comments below. Maybe you're thinking about signing up as a paid subscriber. If so, feel free to share which one and why. And as always, if you found this helpful, be kind and leave a like before you leave. And if you want to see more like this, maybe even a cheeky subscribe. I'll see you next time.